Gregory can already start narrowing it down a little bit because there's only so many decks in the format that would ever mulligan 2-3. Well, Josh is actually going to reveal what he's up to. I'm going to play a Teleria West. Well, Gregory going to show. You know what? Actually, I do kind of want to know what you're up to. Here's a Gataxian Probe from the Citrus Assassin. McLean will show a copy of Ancient Stirrings as well as a Sleight of Hand, a card that we don't see a ton of, actually. Four Share Visions, of course, will be in the deck, and four Ancient Stirrings will be as well. But one copy of Sleight of Hand. Okay. Sure. I can get behind that. I think Sleight of Hand's probably a little underplayed, right? Uh, yeah, I, I am surprised it sees relatively little play, given how 4x Serum Vision is all over the place. This card does not strike me as being a lot worse. Just zero play of Sleight of, sleight of Hand. Zero? I'm not saying yeah. it's a great card or anything, but I think you can get a little more than zero. Right. Like, should your Delver deck be playing maybe one copy of this as a fifth copy of Serum Visions? Maybe. I'm not saying for sure, but I think people too often default to four copies of the good card, good card in quotes, and zero copies of the inferior card, and that's not always correct. Here's Sleight of Hand. Gemstone Mine, the weapon of choice. Slayer Stronghold going to go to the bottom. We saw Delver of Secrets there from Orange to start things off. Gemstone Mine here from McLean. There's a copy of Ancient Stirrings. We'll take a look at the top five. Will Josh. Radiant Fountain among the options here. You have to imagine he's looking for a bounce sign or an amulet. Yeah, two pretty juicy lands to pick up there, and especially on a mulligan to three, uh, you feel like he's going to have to pick up that Gemstone Mine and replay it just to have enough mana to function with over the course of the game. Josh has found a card he's going to take. He's just got to reveal that one, given that it is an ancient stirrings. And this will actually be a little interesting because Josh did not reveal the card that he took from ancient stirrings. So he has a pack negation in his hand, and we might actually get a judge involved here. Yeah, this is. It's a lot awkward. Yeah. So what's going to end up happening here is uh, this is a, a little bit wonky, unfortunately, for Josh. It ends up being a game loss. And I think he knows that immediately because if you take a card off of Ancient Stirrings and don't reveal it, you could have taken any card. Right. It, it almost works its way into it almost works its way into the Patrick Chapin situation that happened at last Pro Tour with the with the Ajani. Mm -hmm. And why that ended up being a game loss is because with these things where you do have to reveal a card, if you don't reveal the card and then maybe shuffle the cards around in your hand or what have you, it's a game loss and. McLean knew that right away. He's like, I'll show you my hand, but that does not matter. And, and McLean also knows that he's just beat there in that game almost certainly. Yeah. So no reason to appeal or just move on with life. It's not a big deal. Yep. Pact Negation was the card in his hand to start the turn. He did find a color of his card from Ancient Stirrings, but it would be a game loss. Again, Josh and Greg both know that. They're both veteran players. They move on accordingly. So Greg Orange is going to win game number one here over Josh McLean. Grixis Delver very quickly up a game here over Amulet Bloom. Josh is going to have to keep a hand with more than three cards, that's for sure. You take a look at his sideboard and the three copies of Leyline Sanctity. Three Thag Tusk, two Pyroclasm, two Seal Primordium, a Collision Relic, a Hornet Queen, a Ghost Quarter, a Chalice of the Void, and a copy of Engineered Explosives. We have oftentimes seen players go to maybe a little bit more fair approach with cards like Thrag Tusk and trying to cast Primeval Titan. Do you think that's the way Josh should go here? I think so. I, I, I'm actually interested in, in going to the Chalice of the Void in this matchup as well, because there's just a lot of one casting cost cards in Gregory's deck. And I think the two Pyroclasms alongside the creatures like Thrag Tusk and Hornet Queen is a solid package. What do we see on Orange's side? Two Dispels, a Negate, a Deprive, a Vendillion Click, and is it Static Caster, a Mammoth Spray, a Vandal Blast, two copies of Blood Moon, a Terminate, a Colagon's Command, two copies of Thoughtseize, and Engineer Explosives. Top of the list, obviously Blood Moon. Yep. Comes into play, will likely KO Josh's deck. Uh, once you get past the Blood Moons, I'm interested in having more counter spells, the discard spells, and the Vendillion Click. Uh, Gregory has some pretty inefficient removal spells that he can cut with two copies of Electrolyze, the Lightning Bolts. These are pretty easy cuts in the matchup. So take those out and bring in good disruption and, of course, the two copies of Blood Moon. Take a question or two here as these players do shuffle up for game number two. McLean will be on the play, of course, for that game. We'll see if he can keep more than three cards, as I did mention. Uh, Patrick... This is, a, this is a fun one for you. Okay. Scott Spurlock would like to know, if you were if you were made to cosplay a Planeswalker, which one would you cosplay and why? Koth. Koth's pretty sweet. The Planeswalker I've played with the most. Koth is your go-to? Have to work on my buys and tries a little bit, <laughs> my lats. Koth's pretty big from what I recall. He is a, is a rather strong individual, you know, it seems. I don't know if I get in the gym enough now to successfully cough, cough, cough play, cosplay, whatever. 
Give me, I don't know, a couple years, maybe I can get there. You really had to go with cough play there, really? Well, aren't just, we just, it, aren't we I wasn't actually trying. That? I wasn't actually trying to do that. It just sort of slipped. And then I thought to myself, that's not actually so bad. Cough play is fine. Uh, I would be leaning towards a Johnny Vengeant. Okay. Um, pretty mad Planeswalker, mm -hmm. and it's the one that I've won the most money with in Magic. Yeah. Okay. So as a result, kind of a, kind of an homage. Right. Fan. Myself. It's much the same answer. It's just which one of these planeswalkers would be sweet to dress up as, and which one have I played a lot to whatever degree of success. Uh, Jacob's last name I'm going to pronounce very poorly. Latvala. Okay. Have you or I ever seen or played a Battle of Wits deck? Well, we've certainly seen them. I lost in the finals of a grudge match challenge to former Wizards coverage writer Toby Wachter. Okay. I was playing an Esper Desolation Angel Shadow Mage Infiltrator control this deck. Is many moons ago. He was playing Battle of Wits and he drew more Shadow Mage Infiltrators and Desolation Angels than I did. So I don't know, whatever. At the time, I was very bitter about it. But yeah, you, don't, I have, you don't sound bitter at all. I have played against Battle of Wits uh, more than once in tournaments, and I think that was the one time where I lost. Uh, I have played with Battle of Wits on Magic Online. Perfect for Magic Online. Absolutely. Perfect. I refuse to do it in real life. It, even though I do love shuffling decks and cards, I actually, <laughs> I actually do. I actually do. I love shuffling decks and cards. When I was a kid, I used to just shuffle a Magic deck while I was watching TV with my dad the entire time. Because I saw all the pros do it, so I wanted to learn how to do it. So I taught myself. And I love shuffling decks, but not that many cards. Yeah. Not that many cards. It's a little too tedious for me. So there you go. Yep. The cosplay idea is not a bad one, though. I'd be interested in that. I actually, at some point in my life, I want to cosplay as Barrett for Final Fantasy VII. Okay. And that's just because he's cool. Okay. It has nothing to do with us maybe looking alike. It's just because he's cool and he has a gun as an arm. Yeah, I would. Uh, an arm. I would just want to be Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. I, I I think you said you might be doing that for Halloween. Yeah. I said yeah, that's good. I'll be down on Bourbon Street, Oscar the Grouch outfit. On Halloween, is it just dressing up in a costume or is it cosplay? Uh, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So cosplay is just what you're doing when it's not Halloween. Right. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Pretty much. That's strange. I think cosplay implies uh, more effort than your average Halloween costume. Ah, also. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that's technically part of the definition, but when I think of cosplay, I, I think someone spent a lot of time and money on this, as opposed to a Halloween costume where you know, you go, you go to your local store, you buy a police officer outfit, you wear it, go trick-or-treating, that's not really cosplay. Well, everyone spends different amounts of effort on things. Yeah, it's, it's all semantics. Okay. I'm just telling you where I draw the lines. A Serum Visions off of Teleria West is how Josh will begin things here for game number two. He actually got to keep a hand of seven cards. You see Orange with just a Scalding Tarn. See where the scry is going to happen here. Josh taking a long look at his hand. Now I was critical of of Delver's secrets right now in the format. Not a big fan of it. This is a matchup where Delver's pretty sweet. The clock is necessary. Yeah, it, Gregory wants to back up his disruption, his counter spells with the quickest clock possible and. Uh, turn one Delver of Secrets looks like Gregory missed there on the first turn. That, that's a big prize for him in this matchup. Josh Dunn scrying. He'll play a forest. Pass the turn back. McLean, of course, a platinum level pro. No slouch whatsoever. But you, you do wonder, and this is the kind of guy who plays a deck a lot, as we saw with Maliripod, uh during Modern while Birthing Out was still legal. How many reps he's actually gotten in with this deck? Yeah, it, it, it's so important, too, because yeah. this deck is... I, I would not be able to pilot this to any success in cold. No when way. I, when I was at the Season 2 Invitational last weekend, Chris Van Muir was waiting for his semifinals match against Josh Ravitz. I said, hey, give me your deck. I'm a goldfish. And after like four turns, I'm like, this is hard. I'm done goldfishing this. This is just way too tough. Here's a thought scour. Delver Secrets is one. Is that a Vandal Blast? I believe that is Vandal Blast. Yeah. yeah. Testing me here in round six, the artwork on that card. Wants to interact with Amulet, of course. Thought Scout were going to allow for a turn two Tasker here if Orange does have it. There's a Polluted Delta he'll sacrifice. That going to go down to at least 18, maybe 16. It shows you, I mean, we're going to see some big Delta right here, but it shows you how much 
this deck cares about its graveyard there. Josh left both on top with that Serum Visions, and Gregory elected to Thought Scour himself rather than Josh. Yeah. That, he just needs telling. velocity in the graveyard. That's very telling. Is it Tasker? Maybe Gurmog Angler? Who knows? It is Tasker. Well, there you go. The 4 5 is here on turn number two. McLean will move to his third turn of the game. Take a draw side. You can see some at Growth Chamber in hand. Let's see if he has some sort of explosive turn here. Has to be a little concerned with the island being available because that can represent a couple of different things. Mostly Spell Snare is a card I'd be worried about right now if I was Josh. Is Josh going to call over a judge here and maybe ask a question about something? Gregory could have just tapped out there. You know, he could have left a card in his graveyard perhaps for future Snapcaster Mages or so forth, but leaving up the blue there when he had the ability just to pay an extra mana and leave something in his graveyard, very telling Spell Snare, Spell Pierce, they're all going to be on the radar right now. Yeah, so we'll be back down to that match as soon as McLean is back. If we can find out exactly what the judge calls about, we'll certainly let you guys know, but for the moment, Cedric Hill is Patrick Sullivan back here in the booth in Charlotte. You can see all those players behind us playing round number six right now. That was quick. It was easy. So we're heading on back right now. We'll see if maybe we can figure out what the question was, but Josh needed a little bit of clarification on something, and the judges are there to do that. Yep. Feels like perhaps it's Summer Bloom turn. Who knows? Well, the problem is that Summer Bloom plays into the two spells Gregory is representing the most loud right now, which is Spell Pierce and Spell, spell snare. snare. Yeah. Amulet of Vigor right now in McLean's hand, too. Also, Summer Bloom. You can see with the counting that Josh is doing at this point may not be as experienced with this deck as some of the other players in this particular tournament. It's a very, very hard deck to play. Yeah. But the people that you see play all the time, they are pretty fat. Once they decide on their line, yeah. they know the patterns. They move pretty fast. Because at this point, you see Josh play Tendo Ice Bridge before anything else. He's trying to figure out exactly what man he wants to use to cast the amulet. So now he's played around Spell Pierce successfully. Now he's going to maybe walk into Spell Pierce or just hope that Greg doesn't have it, and he has Spell Snare to counter Summer Bloom. And that's exactly why you saw Greg delve the way he did for Tasker to be able to leave up that counterspell. Yeah, and Josh can't be surprised by that because Gregory was saying pretty loudly, I've got a one-mana counterspell here of some sort. There's only so many options it could be. There's a Dark Slick Shores. Here's a Delver of Secrets. You saw the attack for four. McLean is down to 16. Clan will draw. Does he have an explosive turn? He's got an explosive card in play in Amulet of Vigor. That's kind of piece one for this deck. The Summer Bloom got countered last turn. Did pick up a copy of Simic Growth Chamber. This is a vulnerability of the Amulet deck. At the end of the day, there's only so many cards that do something. And if your opponent's able to get out in front of you, counter spells and discard spells can pick apart the few pits of, bits of proactive stuff you have to, you have, you can actually do. Cavern of Souls. That's going to enter the battlefield, likely naming Giants, but we'll get confirmation. And it is on Giant. Tendo Ice Bridge going to remove the counter. Here's a copy of Pyroclasm. Hello. Delver Secret's going to bite the dust. But Tasker, well, that's got five toughness. And I would be surprised if Gregory fought over that card, even if he could, yeah. because he's still got a clock in play, and uh, he can really use the counter spells to take care of the few pieces of action Josh can get going here. But the Cavern of Souls is worrisome now. Counterspell is not good for Gregory answering Primeval Titan. Another attack here for four. Orange curious about how many cards McLean has in his hand. He'll play his Steam Fence untapped. I'll have to take two, of course, to do that. And just pass the turn back. McLean will take a draw step. Looks like he may have picked up another copy of Summer Bloom here. The big question, of course, is does he have a payoff card? Yeah. He'll start by playing Simic Growth Chamber. There'll be a trigger there for Amulet, which means that'll untap. Now the trigger with the bounce land of what to pick up is going to flow to blue, which means he'd like to return that to Larry West and perhaps transmute it. But for right now, it's Primeval type. And, well, there's a cavern in play, so that's resolving. Yep. There will be a trigger, of course. Two lands going to end the battlefield here. We'll see exactly what McLean wants to search up. Typically, in situations like this, we'll see Boros Garrison plus Slayer Stronghold. 
but no guarantee that's what McLean wants to do. Try to get all set up for next turn. Hey, you know, there's a couple different ways you can go, you know, with a Simic Growth Chamber and a Flurry West, you pick that up. You know, maybe you just get two lands, something like a Radiant Fountain and something else. I mean, there's so many value lands in this deck, and you are being beaten down by Tasker. And also, if I'm Joss in this situation, for, I have a sneaking suspicion that my Titan's probably just going to die. My opponent hasn't done anything. Yeah, they, they, uh, it's likely here that the first Titan just needs to get the ability to go get a second Titan. Yeah. You know, why are you over there, Greg, not doing anything? That's a little strange to me. I don't buy that I can just say, you know what, give me Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold and let's just keep this train rolling. We'll see which route McLean does want to go, however. Looks like he's thumbing up the Boros Garrison and the Slayer Stronghold. There is Boros Garrison, there is Slayer Stronghold. So if you've never seen this in action before, that'll trigger off the Amulet of Vigor. Those will untap, which means the Titan can get a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. Assuming Gregory has no removal spell, which I, I believe he has terminate in hand. There is terminate. Stop that activation. Now Josh is going to have to work his way towards another Titan or something like a hive mind now. So things are getting a little bit difficult here. And he's underneath enough pressure. This is why you talked about Delver needing to be important. Well, turn two Tasker is basically like playing a Delver. And uh, this is why I think, you know, uh, Josh is going to be trying to do this as much as possible through Primeval Titan because of the Cavern of Souls he has in play. I think he suspects that Gregory has counter spells in hand and the hive mind route or other creatures probably will not be effective. Summoner's Pact. We'll see if this resolves. Josh looking to go that primeval titan route yet again. Keep in mind, three Thrak, Thrak Tusk, excuse me, and a Hornet Queen on the board, too. Both of those cards are actually pretty good on this board. Yep. I, I'm definitely countering this, this pact here. If you have some sort of hard counter, you're countering this? I think so. Unless his plan here is basically to, to Blood Moon and beat Josh with the Summoner Pact payment. Okay. Because there's no guarantee that Josh gets a Primeval Titan here. It's likely. There's a copy of Deprive. There's a hard counter. Interesting. So there goes Summoner's Pack. Here comes Summer Balloon. And this may be an effort here from Josh to get the requisite blue mana he needs to be able to transmute to Larry West. Sure. Because there's no blue mana on the table right now. You know, he can play the, the growth chamber, he can pick up his Tendo Ice Bridge. That's another source of blue mana. And keep in mind that he has not even played a land in this turn, so he gets four land drops. Yeah. Some of them has three additional. So a bunch of mana floating here. Six total, three blue, three green. Josh gonna tick down here. You mentioned Teleria West and wanted to transmute that. He's gotta make sure that he can transmute that and play Primeval Titan in the same turn. And then, you know, if he can work his way into Slayer Strongholding, I think he wants to. Yep. And he's also gonna be caught in kind of the same bind here, which is, uh, do I assume my Primeval Titan is just gonna die here? And how do I get the best possible setup to set it up again for next turn? Because Josh gets another turn at the minimum here. He's only falling to four on the attack, assuming the Primeval Titan dies. Summoner's Pack gets searched for by Teleria West. McLean would like to cast, cast Summoner's Pack. That'll resolve. So now there's Primeval Titan. Now the goal is to cast that. And with the Cavern of Souls in the battlefield, we know that it'll be uncounterable as the Cavern is named Giant right now. So Josh organizing some mana a little bit here. May not be able to slay a stronghold this turn. But keep in mind, he does have a fourth land drop still to make. 
So there is that fourth land drop in Simic Growth Chamber. Now within all of this planning, he needs to make sure that he leaves enough green mana out there to actually be able to pay for Summoner's Pact. Yep. Or that would be a disaster. Now off of the cavern, that's six mana, so there'll be none floating. Now Primeval Titan will resolve. So we go searching. And he also needs to leave, uh, assuming that his primeval titan is going to die. If, if it survives, he's in great shape regardless. But assuming he's going to die, he also needs to make sure that he leaves himself with enough blue mana in play to transmutillary west again next turn. That's a detail that I've seen messed up here before. Yeah. And that may be the reason you're seeing Josh looking at some growth chamber here. Is it's another blue mana which allows him to transmute again next turn if he so needs to. Josh figuring out exactly what lands he wants out of his Amulet Bloom deck. It's tough to do. And if there is ultimately action against this deck, what you're seeing right now is going to be part of it too. Uh, you know, Josh is kind of in isolation playing his own game. Yeah. And Gregory is just sitting here waiting for his opportunity to act. And this is part of why we saw a deck like Eggs kind of get ousted too. Same same thing. Yeah, you're seeing a little bit of solitaire magic. You saw Primeval Titan, it's gonna search up Simic Growth Chamber and Teleria West. And those will untap because Amulet Vigor's on the battlefield. The bounce land trigger, gotta get back on land. So he's gonna transfer to Teleria West that he's got back. So he's gonna transmute there. Very smart by Orange to not let him transmute, because if he does transmute, he could have got a copy of Pact Negation. Yeah, that could have been a disaster there. Yep. Heads up play there by Gregory. Terminate's going to take care of that Primeval Titan. Transmute's not going to resolve. We'll see what McLean wants to get. He will get another Summoner's Pack. He wants to do it again next turn. And that was great sequencing there by Josh. You, you go ahead and you transmute straight away. And if Gregory does nothing, all right, I'll go get Pact Negation. And now the game's probably over. And if Gregory does have a response, he'll probably use it right away. And then I can go get Summoner's Pack and try to set this all up for next turn. Now, it's very important for Josh that he remembers to pay his Summoner's Pack next turn. But I believe he's got enough mana with a land that he can pay for the Summoner's Pack and play a Titan again and say, you know what? Let me do this already. Yep. Orange does have a good taxi and probe in hand. Consider casting it this turn. I've seen many a good man undone by his own pack trigger. As have I. Here's the taxi and probe. You see Josh's hand there. Tendo Ice Bridge, a gemstone mine, and a summoner's pack. Pretty straightforward what he's up to. Yeah, nothing going on there. Yep. And this is a hand that's very vulnerable to a discard spell, the Dillian click, something along those lines. Tasker's going to come in for four more. McLean's going to go down to exactly four. There's an island. I think we might have a Gurmog Angler. Zombie fish. And we do. That's his creature type. That's, that's accurate. Thank you. Orange will pass the turn back. McLean, got to pay for that pact or you lose the game. Looks like he'll be using the Simic Growth Chambers to do that. How wild can he go? That's the question. Time for a draw step, perhaps? It is. Is there a Pendillion click here? Boy, there is. What a draw here from Orange. Great mixture of disruption and pressure. That's yeah. what you need against this deck. Josh's hand, he's got a... Uh, he, he, Greg said, I might target myself, but that's, <laughs> that's unlikely. I don't think that's happening. I'm going to take your summoners back, and I hope you brick off. And the deck's a lot of bricks at this stage. It certainly is. And it looks like Josh may have missed here, and that is going to get the job done. Greg Orge is going to win this match here over Josh McLean. Two games to zero. The Citrus Assassin with his Grixis Delver deck takes care of Amulet Bloom, and he is 6-0 and oh here this weekend. And that feels like a, a fundamentally solid matchup for Grixis Delver. Some scary turns there.